In this final video about the MillerTech Blue Eddy EB200 power station, I'm going to answer all of the questions that I've received over the last few months and give you an insider tip that not many people know about. There is a ton of confusion out there about Blue Eddy power stations. I'm not sure why they decided to flood the market with so many similar models, but Blue Eddy alone has the EB200, EB200P, AC200, AC200P, AC200 Max, and there are even OEM'd units of some of these models starting to show up under completely different brands, like this Energizer unit. They all look very similar, but have very different specs. Unfortunately, all I can do is give you definite info on the EB200, which is a product exclusively available through MillerTech. The only ways you can get that specific model is on Amazon through the MillerTech store or my web store at store.ldsreliance.com. If you're ordering it from somewhere else, it's a different model and will probably have different specs. So let's jump right into the first question, which is how is the battery pack constructed inside the EB200? The EB200 has 16 lithium iron phosphate cells in series, making it a 51.2 volt battery at 40 amp hours. Stick around until the end of the video and I'll show you how to check the individual cell voltages from the LED menu. The second question goes something like, I heard a rumor that you'll lose 20 to 30% of the capacity of the EB200 because the battery management system is inefficient. Is that true? Well. That's partially true, but not because the BMS is bad. Blue Eddy made the design decision to use a high voltage battery pack instead of a 12 volt pack. Because of that, the EB200 can provide the same amount of power to its AC outlets without requiring very high current like a 12 volt pack would require. So not only will the cells be less taxed, but there are also other design advantages such as being able to use thinner wires and less beefy internal connections. But the drawback that relates to this question is that using any DC outputs will be less efficient because the power has to be stepped down from 51.2 volts to 12 volts. In other words, you won't be able to get the full 2048 watt hours from the EB200 via its DC outputs due to losses in heat and voltage conversion, not because the BMS is inefficient. The third and probably most common question is, can you use the Blue Eddy B230 or B300 expansion packs with the EB200? Let me answer this two ways. As a seamless extension of the internal battery packs? No. But as a method to recharge the internal battery packs and thus extend the runtime as a pass-through power source? Yes. In other words, the charging enhancer that you see here that's required to make this work will allow the expansion pack to plug in to the DC charging port and recharge the internal battery pack. So it will extend the runtime of the EB200. But keep in mind there will be some inefficiency there compared to how this works with the AC200 Max or other models where the expansion pack and the internal battery pack both operate in parallel. The fourth question is, can the EB200 be dual charged with two AC adapters? The answer is yes, but you will need a special connector to make it work, and obviously you will need to buy another AC adapter as well. Keep in mind, Blue Eddy did include everything you need to dual charge with AC and solar right out of the box for a total of 1200 watts. But dual charging with AC and AC will be limited to 1000 watts and does require an extra couple of purchases. Look for links in the video description for the parts you need. With these parts, you can connect one AC adapter through the DC or solar input port on the left, while the other AC adapter is connected to the AC input port. And the fifth question is, can the EB200 charge via a single 12 volt solar panel? This one caught some folks by surprise that maybe didn't look at the specs or weren't looking at the right model. The answer is no. Some of the confusion may be because the EB200P model, which is sold directly by Blue Eddy and is identical looking, can charge with a single 12 volt solar panel down to 10 volts. But the MillerTech EB200 requires between 35 volts and 145 volts for the solar charging to work. That means most solar panels, especially foldable solar panels, will not work. There are a few 36 and 48 volt models out there, and I will include a few links in the video description of some that I found, 
but please keep in mind I'm not affiliated with these products or companies in any way, just trying to help you guys out. One option is to use multiple 12 volt solar panels and wire them in series, like I've done here. That's actually really easy to do and doesn't require any additional cables or adapters as long as the solar panels you're using have industry standard MC4 connectors on their cables. If you need help making that happen, I do have a video on my channel that explains series wiring, or you can contact me or leave a comment for help. You can see here that two solar panels can work. However, they need to have an operating voltage of at least 18 volts each or it won't work. The safer bet would be to use at least three 12 volt panels and then you don't have to worry about their specs. Okay, so if you waited this long, here you go. This is how to access the secret BMS menu. Just tap several times in the upper left and a new menu pops up showing all of the individual cells and their voltages, as well as the temperatures being read by the four temperature sensors. I don't know what A, B, and D are for, but the P one on the right side is for the solar input. Well, hopefully that answers everyone's questions. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe if you're new to my channel.